Today, I'm gonna to share with you my design process. Um, I have, uh, for the past couple of years, been playing around with a, uh, a site called OpenJS CAD, which is a, um, a CAD program that uses JavaScript, a programming language, to code models instead of design them, uh, and, or in instead of design them with modeling tools like a, uh, like a drag and drop type thing. So I've played around with this and I've really become fascinated by the ability to make parametric models models that are defined by a certain set of parameters like what's if a cube it could be its width or its height or a cylinder it could be its radius and its length and i use these these parameters to create much more sophisticated shapes so today i'm going to use uh i'm going to use a model that i just created which is a uh, it's a pen holder that i built to fit on my shelves in my uh, in my office and the parameters for this are the number of holes, uh, the size of each hole, the spacing between each hole, uh, the depth, and a couple of other parameters, whether I want to have uh, square or round. These are all parameters that I have set up that by just changing these parameters, I can make different models. Let me show you what this looks like. So I'm going to use the uh, this tool OpenJS CAD, and it is a website uh, you can go to. I'll, I'll post a link in the uh, uh, I'll post a link in the show notes. Uh, you basically drag a JavaScript file that has this definition in it, and you drag it into this uh, section of the site. And what you see is you see a model, and you actually see right next to it all of the code that goes into making it. And if you ever use seen JavaScript uh, code on a website, this is exactly the same language. This has a few new terms in it. Like say, for example, there is a, uh, a term for a cube right here. There is a union to combine two cubes. I can put a color or something. So with this, these are the parameters. And so I can take this right here and I can change the parameters. Instead of seven across and four rows, I can give it, for example, 10 and it regenerates it. Or I can change the round, change to use round holes. And now it has round holes. And what I can do is I can generate a model, either in a 3MF or STL, and it generates a model that uh, I can then send to a 3D printer. And that's how I've been making these. So I've made, a, I've made one that's a six by three right here. I've made one that's a, 10 by 2 with round holes and I made another one here a little larger with a 4 by 4 and I can just by changing these parameters I can make something that prints and I can make something that is a custom design I uh, the shelves that I have are two centimeter higher 20 millimeter high shelves that I got from the container store and uh, these fit just perfectly on them um, I haven't set up the shelf height as a parameter uh, but that could be something that you could do if you wanted to uh, to uh, clone this repo and, and change it and make your own version. So what I'm going to walk through today is my process of how I make something like this so that I can then make models. So I love making design tools, making tools to help people be creative. And so this is one of my favorite little tools, this OpenJS CAD, where I can just write code and have that code turn into something pretty cool. So I'll, I'll, let me get started. So... I'm going to start off with this. I'm going to start off with just a blank file. And this is a simple function, function main return cube. I'm using a Visual Studio code here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, start to build this up of the pieces that the code for this whole model really is very small. It's, it's, it's less than 100 lines of code. And what I'm going to do is so I'm going to walk you through my process for how I make these kind of things. So I'm going to start off by, in Visual Studio code, I'm going to go to uh, reveal this in the Explorer, and then I'm going to drag this model file right here. And now what I have here is I have a unit cube. The units we I use here are the millimeters, so that's a one millimeter cube. Now, the whole idea of a parametric uh, model is that I have uh, that I can input values without changing the code. I have a that's at, that input form that you saw. I don't see the form here. It was down in this lower left. I have that form that I can start using to enter the parameters. 
And for this uh, for this tool, the 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 form is defined by a function with a certain name, and what that would be is right here: get parameter definitions. And if I look at this get parameter definitions, what I see is that there is uh, for each of the parameters that might be here, and if I press Control S, so I have this checked for auto reload, and if I press Control S when I'm in Visual Studio Code, I now see this getting updated. So now I see the uh, number of columns and rows, the depth, all these parameters are all defined in here. If I change any of these words, they all get changed here. So I give it a uh, the name of the uh, of the uh, of the parameter the type integer or float, or in this case, a checkbox, which would be a Boolean. I have the initial value and I have the caption. And what you see here is that generated automatically that generated that, that generated that. And so to use those, I give my main function a param. And that is where that I get the parameters. So the easiest way to understand this is I'm going to give the, do a little calculation. And that calculation is the, the the size of the uh, the box that would form this here. This is basically the the, uh, the the width and the height and the back is the depth. So if I look at the width, that is the number of columns times the column size plus the thickness, the thickness between each of these columns uh, times the number of columns plus one. And the same thing with the height. Then what I can do is I can create a cube with those parameters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this cube right here, like I did, I'm going to make a, a red cube. So instead of creating a cube, I'm going to make a, I have two functions here. One is uh, color and one is cube. And I can do this because what this will do So this would be color of the cube, and let's see, do I have my cube here? Ah, there we go. So now I have a cube, the size that I need, and this is a big block, and I would basically I'm going to punch a bunch of holes in this. So that's the basics of the of the uh, uh, of the first parameter. I'm using the width and the height, uh, which is determined by the number of columns, the number of the rows, the thickness, and the size. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to punch the holes in it. And the way I do that is I'm going to create a bunch of, uh, of cylinders or a bunch of, uh, of, of prisms or, or, or rectangles, uh, basically extruded cubes. And I'm going to turn, I'm going to make a little function for each one of these cubes. And so this is going to be a, a couple steps. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a function to create all the cells. So uh, this function, basically, given the parameters, I haven't called this yet, but given the parameter, I'm going to create an array of cells. And for each of the rows and for each of the columns, I'm going to create a cell. And I need to make a function, this, this create cell function. So that create cell function looks like this. So what this does is if I pass, if the, if the round parameter, if this is a round, uh, um, if I want round holes, then I create a cylinder with these parameters, or I create a cube. And so now, if I want to put the, uh, the cube with the, uh, what I want to do is I want to subtract the, the, the cells from the, uh, from the cube. So the way I do that, is let me pull this out I just call the function subtract so subtract create cells with this parameter and let me press control s and now look at that I now have all my cubes uh, already created and I see that because I I, I uh, translated this I moved these cells up a little bit it is only on one side so I have basically a bottom of my uh, of my assembly and I have my cells I'm almost done 
the last the next thing I want to do is I want to create the clips that I use to have this sit on the uh, to sit on the shelf. And you see I have this angle down a little bit so I don't, I don't have the pencil pencils fall down. So I'm going to create the clips. So each of the clips has a function too. So my create clip function, what this does is it creates a set of cubes. So one, two, three cubes, and then another one right here, actually one cube, two cube, three cube, and another one right here that is at a different angle. So it looks like this is kind of a wedge. And so I did that by union, by putting these cubes together with a union function. Now union, I sort of uh, merged them all together into one assembly there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to then um, take these two clips and I'm going to put them into the model that I had here before I subtract. So I'm going to take the, the original model of the big cube, uh, the big red cube. I'm going to create a clip, uh, add this clip in and add another clip in, translated, move down the, uh, by the, uh, 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 but the width minus the clip width. So what I have here now, control S, now I have my clips. So I now have my clips, I have my, uh, uh, all my parts to my assembly. The only thing I need to do now is I want to make this ready to print. If I print this like this, I'll have to print a lot of supports. And uh, this won't work unless I print a lot of supports. I designed this model so it can be printed without supports. So what I do is I'm going to do a little another one more function that I have here called prepare print. And I'm going to call prepare print. I'm going to call this bar model equals and then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do return prepare print model width height params depth so this that function will then rotate this and translate it so it's in the middle of the scene so now I have my model all complete. And all I need to do now is print it out. So I can see now the model has seven row, seven columns, four rows. I can give it four rows and four columns. I can give it six columns with round holes. I can make my clips uh, wider. Okay, so this is the design that I've created. I wanted I, uh, it, uh, I, I needed it for myself. I wanted a place to put my pens and pencils and I wanted to be uh, have something that was sort of configurable. So uh, this whole source code for this is up on GitHub and uh, please feel free to try it out, print your models. I'm gonna put it on, uh, on Thingiverse as well. So uh, please print it out, make some models and see what you can do with this. If you, it's on GitHub, so please fork it or make your modifications and, and, su and suggest it make changes because uh, this is really fun to be able to design in, design in the wild, be able to design to create something, to have people create something with it, you create a design tool, have people build things with it, and then help me modify it to make an even better solution. So um, please like this if you think this is helpful. Uh, if you want me to do more of these, uh, please like me too, like the... Uh, 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 like the show as well. And thank you so much for your time.